Welcome everyone to the Gucci County Board of Commissioners meeting for Tuesday, November 23rd, 2021. Would you please help me open this meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, everyone. First item is of county business is to approve the proposed agenda with additions and or deletions. We have one addition to note. And we is it okay uh, to put that under four uh, B? Yes. Okay. I'll be like Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. You did all right. Okay. Any discussion on the additional conditions for the agenda? Hearing no discussions, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carried. Thank you. The next up is to approve the minutes from the November 9th, 2021 regular meeting. I make that motion to approve the minutes. I'll second that. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. Thank you, Commissioner Stoy. Any discussion on the minutes? Okay, then I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. Three, two, aye. one. Opposed? And motion carries. Uh, next up is financial business. Chair, sure. I will move on the courthouse claims uh, to uh, ratify 11-8-21 uh, claims, uh, approve public health and human service claims, A, B, and C. I'll second that. Commissioner Discussion on the claims. Okay, and then I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Great. The next item is third quarter budget to actual review. Very good. I think uh, I emailed you this, uh, but I also um, provided you a copy of the budget to actual report. I'm going to go through this in some detail today because it is third quarter and we're getting closer to the end of the year. Um, the first uh, page shows general revenue expenditures. And I just want to point out uh, the first one, uh, COVID-19 uh, expenses. Those were obviously unbudgeted. Um, and we have uh, finally heard back from FEMA. Uh, Betsy sent in uh, the first quarter expenses uh, back in April, and they uh, did not allow some uh, allowable expenditures. The things that they pulled out um, from FEMA, and that's the COVID um, FEMA reimbursement because there was uh, an emergency order in place at that time. They pulled out um, all of the uh, board uh, per diem claims. So anytime boards uh, would go to uh, COVID-related meetings, we would um, flag that to the FEMA expenditure. But they claimed they said that those were unallowable expenses. The other unallowable expenses have been anything related to IT, like all of our hotspots, our um, uh, phones that we've had, um, like the sisters all got cell phones because they were working remotely. So they, they didn't allow as many as expense, expenses as we would have liked. Um, I would say that you know 90% of our costs were covered by the CARES Act, but these were expenses that were incurred after the CARES Act um, uh, was done, which was at the end of November in 2021. We're still going to resubmit the majority of um, what is eligible for reimbursement are going to be the 
uh, emergency management extra per extra wages that we paid during the pandemic and during the emergency order of about three thousand dollars a month. So we'll be able to recoup those costs, um, but not all of these costs that are that are listed here. The other one, um, we did receive money for uh, COVID business grants. Those funds were all um, received and uh, we were able to keep about 5% for administrative costs and the rest were um, distributed to businesses that applied for the grants. And we went through that process and the KEDA office helped us with that. Um, county board, uh, you guys are at about 74%. Uh, the percent of budget being its third quarter should be about 75%, so you're right on target. I did lower um, expenses last year because we weren't doing as much travel, and so that saved um, considerably, but that was already reflected in the budget. Um, I want to point out court expenses. Court expenses, uh, that, that title might be a little bit misleading. Um, these are expenses that, we, that the county has to pay for in terms of wages for bailiffs, okay? So because we haven't had any money, as many in-person court um, activities going, we're saving some money on our bailiffs, but what's happening is the correction officers have had to pick that up. So when they do the Zoom meetings now for court, <laughs> instead of a bailiff coming, you know, taking them to uh, the courtroom, there's actually a CO or extra, if there's um, not enough uh, correctional staff, then somebody, um, John Frobke typically does it, or Perrin or Carrie, will uh, help with those Zoom meetings, but that's why the big reduction, um, the, the cost savings there is because of um, the court backlog and because we're now using correction officers for that instead of bailiffs, so. Um, the law library is basically a wash in and out every year. Um, county administration, we're at about 68%, and the reason why that's um, a little bit low is because we do have remaining project and contingency funds of about $90,000. I'm not expecting all of those to be used before the end of the year, so we'll come in a little bit under budget. Um, We, the other one I want to point out is um, we've got, uh, we had an expenditure for the 2020 election that actually got posted in 21. We had a, uh, some print supplies that were ordered last fall that didn't get uh, paid for this year, so there really was um, nothing budgeted for that. It was just, uh, it was from the last year's election. And everything else seems to be in pretty good order. Uh, we did use some funds from Seeking Building this year. Those are funds that we're committing. And uh, there was uh, an expenditure that was unbudgeted that uh, Complex had to use this year. So uh, we just uh, used a small amount of our Seeking Building funds. Carpool is down significantly, only at 31%, and the reason for that is because a vehicle purchase was put on hold. We're having an incredibly hard time um, going through state bids and getting vehicles. You're going to find that this is true for um, our veterans van that we were going to buy this year, um, for a couple squads that we were looking at, and also I don't think Lands and Forestry was able to get their vehicles this year, although they finally have a VIN number on that, so it's being built. Um, I don't know if that's gonna happen um, this year or next year, but a lot of those vehicle purchases are gonna be pushed into 2021. Um, emergency management, you can see they're uh, considerably over budget, and that's because uh, they did not include the Operation Walleye, but all of the Operation Walleye was uh, funded through grants, and so now we're just uh, waiting for some grant reimbursement through that, but you can see that was considerably over budget um, from where we had estimated. But was any of that eligible for the amount of reimbursement for the extra work and stuff that was going on? You know, um, he got a very large grant, about $80,000 to pull that off, and so I think it was just those funds that were be being used for that project. I do not believe he received any extra funds from FEMA for that exercise. Although I think it was federal funds that came in to fund that, that project. 
Um, let's see where we're at. Minnesota Trails Association. So we're actually um, have a little bit more expenditures, and again, that's because uh, there were some funds that uh, we received in 2020 that weren't paid out until 2021. That is really just a pass through. The grant funds are received for the trails, and then the trails receive the money. Uh, the Historical Society, Egg, Egg Society, and um, some of those, uh, County Extension, those are pretty much allocations and those are all usually paid out um, uh, in two apportionments. Uh, the first um, half in, in January and the second half in July. The yeah, airport? The, 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 the first thing, the unknown issue is going to be the one. Pardon me? The, the roof becomes an issue here trying to get that fixed. Yes. They are able, you know, right now they've been able to, uh, the packing they did has worked pretty well, but they still get some leaks. And, you know, last summer they were, one of them had to stay there all night to get the water. That's a yeah. lot of us. So we're going to have to work with the city, I suppose, or something. We're going to have to come up with something there. And the sooner the better. I mean, that's what they're waiting for because, we, you know, we had a good bid. I wish we could have got to enter and taken that one. It's going to be more now. I don't know. I think the city will put some money in. That's a great thing. I think so, too. So, and then we go up to the airport. You can see that the amount that we budgeted was uh, really just our uh, share of um, operations. But actually, we paid 3.3 million, but that's the cash flow for construction costs. Um, down in revenues, which we'll go through in a little bit uh, on the next page. We've been reimbursed that, but we still have some receivables due that we'll talk to we, about when we get down to revenues. Uh, the small city grant was a little bit higher um, than we had budgeted, and that's because we received more revenue, and that uh, grant was is done on a percentage of revenue received from the Great Northern Transmission Line. Um, our insurance has been paid in full, so we um, have a slight, uh, we over budgeted a little bit, so there's about $25,000 of additional revenue. Our retired uh, medical and elected officials, I, I, I did not budget properly for that. I missed, um, we've got, oh, I think we added another elected official and I didn't update that, so we're going to be a little bit over budget on that expense. The total expenditures um, budgeted were 8.8 .8 million, actual is 9.8 million, and again, that's because the large increase is because of the airport, um, but those were offset by revenues. And then we look at revenues. Uh, this only includes the first uh, period settlement, and so uh, about half of the property taxes. You can see we've got a collection rate of 60%. Uh, delinquents are coming in higher than we had budgeted. We've got additional money from the power light, and that's the great, part of the Great Northern Transmission Line plus the other utilities. So we've got um, other utilities that pay the personal property tax. Um, other tax is even a little bit higher than uh, estimated. The majority of the item that makes up the other tax is the reimbursement from the land and tax settlement. We've been, um, there's a, like a 10 year period where the land is settled, but we're gonna get some money every year. It's gonna decrease over a period of like five or six years to offset some of those, um, that the um, tax settlement. And then we have our American Rescue Plan. None of those funds were budgeted. Uh, after having a couple webinars with um, Clifton Larson Allen, they are recommending that we just move this into its own fund balance because it's going to be going on for several years. Um, it's really going to be the best way to track our expenditures in that fund. So right now we only have a couple expenditures that we've posted to this account. We're going to move that into its own general own fund before the end of the year and move all of the transactions over there as well. And that'll make it a lot easier to budget and to, and to track. 
We have our uh, PILT payment that came in about where budgeted CONCON -con, uh, revenue was down a little bit. And that CONCON -con revenue is really based on what they harvest off of those lands um, or mine. Um, there's some, some timber that uh, gets harvested and also some gravel and things like that. Uh, Nathan keeps a pretty close eye on what's happening in that area so that we get a better idea of how to budget the next year. But we have been down. Um, we were down a little bit from what was budgeted. Uh, let's see. Our federal PILT is a little bit higher. Of course, it's not significant at only about 12000 a year. Uh, rents and dividends are coming in as expected at about 76% of revenues. Miscellaneous revenue, again, is up a little bit, um, but not a huge dollar amount. The interest on investments, this is the one um, that I want to spend a little bit of time talking about because we budget about 200, you know, it depends on what the rates are. Obviously, rates are pretty low, so we uh, budgeted only $275,000 this year for rates for interest. But what happened is we had to take a $730,000 write down um, on our books this year. We have, um, for the last several years, um, the investment funds on the auditor treasurer's trial balance was not being updated when investments were being sold and deposited into the Bremer account. So for the last couple of years, we've been making adjustments. Um, so our, our uh, financial statement was actually correct, but we weren't carrying through until we were able to uh, work with the auditor treasurer and get that trial balance, uh, the investment section corrected. When the auditors were here in August, they, they spent a lot of time with Tammy and were able to clean up that trial balance. And once that was done, then we could make that entry on a cash basis. And so we're not going to be carrying that um, year after year. Um, but that's going to have a significant impact because right now, you know, we're, um, the variance is um, significant. And so that is going to um, probably wipe out any general revenue gains we might have had. Uh, the trust fund apportionment was just slightly higher than anticipated. Uh, there's our COVID uh, business uh, grant revenue that we've received. Uh, and that was split between uh, administration for just that 5% administration cost and then the grants. Um, we did budget for some FEMA reimbursement. Uh, that was actually, I think, received after this uh, in October. So that'll show up at year end. Um, and then revenues by department. Uh, each department has some revenues coming in. We are still expecting some additional revenues from the TV channel change. We've gotten 95% of those expenses reimbursed, but there's still another 5% that they're waiting for until the project gets closed out. And I can't uh, tell you how much work Lee and Bethany did for those grants. I mean, I was getting emails for a year from the FCC and they continually had to go in and make adjustments to their invoices and it was um, quite a project and I have to give them a lot of credit for sticking through um, and um, working on getting us that reimbursement. Uh, we did, um, at the end of uh, September, we did not yet have our, our dividend from MCIT. We had budgeted 51000 and we are putting this directly into the sinking building fund and then uh, committing those funds. So we're saving those for emergency uses. Uh, good news for that, though, we actually got about $84,000 uh, and not the fifty one. So that MCI dividend um, was uh, a significantly higher than what I had budgeted. Um, all other charge for services are about um, are pretty consistent with the budget, except for, of course, carpool fees because we don't have people traveling using the carpool, and so then those fees we don't charge those departments for the fees, and so those revenues are down. 
um, even though they aren't really interdepartment revenues. And then there is the big one, that the airport construction reimbursements. We've received a little over $3 million this year. Uh, those are uh, FAA grant reimbursements. The total due from the airport right now is about $1.7 million. I think we're really close to the construction being completed there, so I don't, I think we paid our last big construction bill. Is that right, Wade? Yep. Yeah. And Terry? Just yeah. Yeah. So now the city and the county will wait for reimbursements and hopefully get some of these, uh, all these projects closed out, and we won't have a final number until that project's closed out. I'm hoping for 100% reimbursement, but this is just our half of the reimbursement. The city also is carrying that same receivable. I'm not sure if we're going to get all of those um, funds for, and that's a, a combination of all of the phases of the projects, including the construction of the airport. So I, is there going to be a little bit of a lull after this runway phase, before we um, start, before there's a new project that started at the airport, what, what's the status of the airport projects? We're open, so yeah, uh, it's, this has actually been a, it's been a five-year project and a complete mm -hmm. reconstruction of the entire airport, the runways, the terminals, everything. Right. Moving the weather balloon station. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it's complete reconstruction. Yeah. So everything is in ailing shape out there as this ends, and yeah, we shouldn't have any major projects. We do have we, we do have a couple coming. One's a, uh, a fuel tank distribution that doesn't meet all the qualifications now for safety. So that that that'll be coming up. Right. And then there's always equipment that needs to be updated. But I but if, if we get a little bit of a break in construction, I think we'll be able to you know. Uh, if they apply for all of the reimbursements, and by the end of next year, we'll get a really good idea about those total project costs. And so if we look at uh, total uh, revenue and expenditures right now, we obviously have uh, about 1.4 of additional revenues, and that is largely due to the uh, American Rescue Plan funds that we've received. And those are restricted, so technically it's not really a gain in any fund balance. If we go to page four, we start looking at the uh, different uh, funds. Uh, highway fund is, part, is fund 10. They um, anticipated actually gaining revenues of about 108,000. Right now we're at uh, a gain of 127,000. The change in fund balance, uh, that note there of the decrease of fund balance of 1.4, that's not, uh, that note that says the CASA construction funds have not yet been received. The only funds that we're waiting for are some projects that are being closed out. So we've got 103 and a couple other smaller ones. So maybe we'll get another 500,000 in construction in CASA construction funds yet we before the end it. of the year. We just got it yesterday. Oh, you got it yesterday. Perfect. So that's good news. So uh, we're going to get 35. Did you? Even with the overpay. Great. So they're in really, um, it, it's nice to get those projects closed out at the end of the year because then you've got a good fund balance to, to work with when you're planning for the next year. Do we still want the contract? Oh, we have a So 103 isn't uh, isn't 100 percent closed out. We we went for reimbursement for the engineering and uh, right away and, and received that. But Thank you. Public Health and Human Services uh, is actually budgeted for zero fund use. Um, right now they're showing a, a little bit more in, in uh, expenditures than revenues, but a lot happens there, I noticed, in the last quarter. And they um, have been, for the last three years, Public Health and Human Services has been coming in under budget. A, a lot of that does have to do with uh, out of home placements, yeah. but I think those have been within what they budgeted. Yeah. So that's a good thing. 
The next fund we're looking at is environmental services. That's on page five. Um, a couple changes there, and I've been working with Matt to determine, uh, see where we're going to end up at the end of the year. The uh, again, capital purchases the MSW trailer that was budgeted in 2021 will not happen until 2022. So we've adjusted the budget for 2022, but. Um, rather than using uh, reserves of about 426,000, I think we've got that down to under 300,000, and I wouldn't be surprised if it comes in a little bit lower than that. Uh, the other funds, we have um, the West Cooch Water Fund, and that's our paper makers. Basically, it's about 75,000 that's sitting in that fund. It gets a little bit of interest every year. Um, but that's just set aside for any future improvements to that uh, area of West Cooch. We've got our ConCon funds. ConCon had budgeted to use about $100,000 of reserves. And the reason for that was because um, they, they had a construction project that they did this year. Um, they did in addition to the Birchdale Community Center. I believe a lot of that has been completed, if not almost completely done. And so, um, The end of the rainbow was. They're anticipating to use. Uh, they were anticipating to use about a hundred thousand dollars of reserves, but they're still showing a, a gain of about twenty-five thousand. <laughs> and then we look at our KDA fund. Like I said, um, that fund balance um, as of nine thirty was one hundred and forty-six thousand, but we just received one hundred and seventy-seven thousand of IRRB funds. So, a good fund balance number for that is about 300,000. And then we get to our projects funds. Um, we've got the Island View Sewer Project. We've actually had uh, some expenditures of about $630,000 this year. We had budgeted to uh, sell some bonds to cover uh, those costs. And the project did not get closed out this year, so we're going to wait till the project gets closed out. We know what all of the costs are before we go and bond for those additional expenditures for that, the sewer sort of project. And then um, we look at uh, the other uh, capital project fund that we have, and there's uh, were some small expenses for the Northland Counseling Project. But we did receive um, some, some uh, funds of, that were deposited into, it was at Park State Bank in Grand Rapids. So Northland Counseling, the project, uh, the difference between the project cost and the amount of geo bonds that, were, that are being received by um, the counties receiving the, the geo bonds, Northland Counseling is doing the project. There was a, a, a $2.4 million difference between what was received and, and the cost of the project. Before the grant agreement could be in place, they needed to actually show proof of those funds. So Northern Counseling had to go out and sell bonds. They've sold those bonds. They've been deposited into Park State Bank, which is an account that is owned by the Kuchichin County. So those are additional revenues that are sitting in there, but obviously they're restricted for that project. Now, last week, I did receive notice that they received an additional $1.5 million in bonding funds. So that's great. So um, that's going to greatly reduce um, their costs, um, their share of costs for the project. Um, and I think that will um, really help um, Northern Counseling in, in that project. It made all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, let's see, what else? We have debt sewer funds. We've got Jackfish Bay. Jackfish Bay is actually running a negative uh, fund balance. We're, we're paying out our principal and interest payments before we're receiving our revenues, our, our debt service fees, and our special assessments. At the end of the year, we'll be having to make a transfer from general revenue. It's just a temporary loan uh, because we can't have funds with negative balances. And so we'll uh, transfer funds uh, from general revenue into this fund and also the Island View Sewer Project. And um, then in January, we basically just transfer it back. So, um, but we do need to recognize that we can't have zero fund balances. And so we'll show it as a, do, you know, as a um, uh, 
uh, due to and due from other funds. Catfish is going to be getting close to uh, the end. It is getting really close, and every year I, at the end when I do the audit report for specials collected and what's receivable, I do a calculation about where the fund balance is sitting and how much debt we still owe, and we're going to be short about $35,000, which isn't significant considering the project. <coughs> so what's going to have to happen is they'll have to continue to collect debt service fees. The district will until that debt's paid off. So. Um, and then again, we also have the Island View Sewer uh, Debt Service Project Fund. Um, right now we're collecting special assessments and a very small amount for debt service until the uh, project closes out, then we'll reassess what that debt service amount will need to be to, make sure to uh, pay the bonds. And then we have our land and forestry funds. As you know, um, all of the expenditures for the land and forestry fund operations um, get paid from the tax forfeited trust account. Um, they also manage several other restricted funds. Um, and so one of the things that I do look at is that timber balance, uh, the, the, the trust fund summary and Again, a lot of activity happens this last quarter and especially the last few months in, in December. Uh, those sales, it's really unpredictable what's going to happen. But what we can do is look at, compare our fund balance last year at the time compared to the fund balance this year. We're a little bit higher this year and, and part of that is due because we have the land sale. I don't expect revenues to be considerably higher from that trust fund apportionment in in uh, 21, uh, any any higher than they were in 20, 21 and 22. So I'm not expecting an increase in that. And so our total budget, we were anticipated to use about $700,000 of uh, restricted funds last last or reserve funds in 2021. Actually, right now we're showing a uh, reserve gain, and again, that's primarily due to the. Um, American Rescue Plan funds that we've received that are restricted. And that's the financial report. Any, any questions? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Oh, well, you did a good job explaining everything. Good. Uh, I also have to. Um, let you know that uh, Margaret actually did 90% uh, of this report, um, kind of moving it from IFS into you know this account activity, um, and then I basically all had to re all I did was review the account activity and put in the fund balances. So uh, Margaret saved me a, a couple days of work. So, but, and she did a great job with it. So uh, that was the first time that she's helped me with this, and uh, it was very very helpful to me. So. to set the 2022 County Board salary. And the proposed salary is a 2% uh, increase and no increase in per diem rates. So the 2022 proposed salary would be 15,750. 2022 proposed per diem is 125, which is all finished. Mr. Chair, I'll move to approve that. Thank you, Mr. Shreedy. I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Sway. Any discussion? No. Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Human resource business, uh, to improve employment promotion. Yes, and I also have that addition. Um, but yes, so first of all, I am looking for approval for employment promotion of Lisa Mortensen to the Sheriff's Secretary Civil Process position uh, with her wage starting at 85% per the recommendation of the County Sheriff and Under Sheriff. 
and Lisa's official start date will be tomorrow, the 24th. Getting the approval is because they're recommending to start her at 85 percent. Of what? I mean, that's what uh, of the of the share of secretary wage scale. Oh, okay. So, so there is a there is a there is a scale. Yep. Okay. Yep. There is a set scale. Sorry. Yes. So that'd be step two. Correct. What was her original position? I'm sorry. Her original. Uh, Lisa did. Um, I like to refer to her as a jack of all trades because she worked part time in corrections, the sheriff's secretary, transport. Uh, she's done a multitude of positions up in the jail there. Well rounded. Yeah, very much so. Official uh, job title, jack of all trades. That's what I refer to her as. Uh, yeah, now she's going to be just uh, sheriff's secretary, <laughs> civil process. <laughs> and then I also had an addition. So um, any, any further discussion on the employment promotion? Hearing no further discussion on public question, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. And the addition? Yes, for the addition, I have um, to approve the employment separation of Jackie Nagel, our IS director. Uh, and this will be effective February 12th of next year, 2022. So we are also seeking authorization to fill the vacant position, upcoming vacancy. Uh, yeah, I know it. It's uh, definitely covering many years of experience and knowledge. And how, long, how long can we keep her from <laughs> <laughs> That's a discussion you'll have to have with Ms. Uh, Nagel there. <laughs> Maybe you can coax her a little. Stay long. I'll make that motion. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Thank you, Commissioner I just like to I'm say, sorry, who made the first? Uh, Commissioner Murray. Okay. Commissioner Bradley and, and, and Jack has done a multitude of things over the last couple of years with all the stuff that's been going on. So truly uh, a lot of a lot of good work has, has gone in that department and a lot of changes and stuff that are continuing to happen to along with the security and the and though you know the working from home and remote and things like that and as well as some other other uh, outside of the uh, type of realm and stuff too, which he holds a lot of that together for a couple of other committees too that were you know, a part of. So thank you to Jackie and yeah, it's definitely some. Remember when we hired her? That means I'm getting old. Kind of getting old. I'm getting old. I worked with her for many many years. Yeah, she she started in the infancy of what we consider our our uh, IS department. There was nothing that uh, I know of that she didn't handle fine. Yeah, always helped us out. Mm -hmm. just run by, run a tight ship. Mm -hmm. Let's get away with much. I wish she was here today so we could give her a hug. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let her know that way. I sure will. Free rep. Yes, it will be very difficult to replace for sure. And that's all I have this week. Any, any further discussion? Here you know, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Item is to approve the 2022 county liquor and tobacco licenses. This has been voted by the license committee. I'll move, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Pavlik. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Scoy. Any discussion? Mr. Chair, I just wanted to bring it to your attention um, that we do have one. Uh, Liquor license applicant that has not paid for property taxes, um, so will, but they are 
in the process of being paid. So we'll just verify that those are paid before we send um, that particular money for um, licensing to the state. That is a stipulation. That is a stipulation that the property taxes be paid in full or are current. So they did not pay second half. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing now, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 To be on first and second. Opposed? And motion carries. Uh, Commissioner Dabla, thank you. Thank you. I can't speak in here at the same time. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Should see it from our side. We can't do anything. Next up is to consider uh, a four-year extension with Murray Surveying Professional Services. Move. Oh. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. Pretty dependable name here. Better <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the, the names do sound familiar. Yeah. Uh, any, any discussion? Well, wow, and you've just done a wonderful job for us over all these years. Before I started. And Matt and I talked a little bit about, about some of the stories and some of the commitment that he has with the county and he truly wants to love what he does. Yeah, he does. You know, the, and his wages are just fairly uh, uh, Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. The next item is to approve the 2022 County Board meeting schedule. Looks like there's a couple of meetings every month next year. Yes, we're trying to meet the second and fourth Tuesday of every month. Um, the only real adjustment that we made is uh, in, in uh, September and October, we just added cows, um, at least for, it looks like October, November for budget. And those can be adjusted as we get closer or caught up, but we probably will. Budget um, takes a lot of time, a lot of meetings. Nice. Uh, any, well, I'll accept a motion for this. Oh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. I'll second. <laughs> Thank you. We all know where we'll be at certain time. For the next year. <laughs> uh, any discussion? Okay, now I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Next item, our uh, treasurer, uh, Southeast Coaching Fire Coverage. Tom. Yeah, I'll uh, hopefully be brief. We talked about a lot of this stuff before. I've been visiting with Wade about it, and uh, um, I think you folks all know the issue that the folks down in uh, Southeastern Cooch have been covered by the Bearville Fire Department, kind of a combination of those folks and the people uh, up north, uh, Ned Lake. And uh, the folks at Bearville would like to be compensated for that. Um, so we've been going around and around about that. It's been about, it's about $3,125, I believe, per year. They'd like to be compensated this year and next year. I talked to Kevin, or uh, Kevin, um, Jeff Naglaski, and asked him if there was a vehicle for us to do that, uh, to pay those folks without some kind of underlying overall county um, benefit. He couldn't find one, uh, but he hasn't, he's not done reaching out to his, uh, some of his colleagues in St. Louis County who might have more experience with that. Um, obviously the easiest thing to do would be to just pay him some money, but that doesn't, that's not the way it works. Wouldn't be fair to other folks. But bottom line is Bearville is kind of ready to wash their hands of it. Uh, of the formal responsibility of taking care of those areas without that. So um, I've looked into a taxing district a bit. I have uh, kind of a, 
a law here, Jeff pointed me to, that we could affect, but it wouldn't be effective till 2023. Uh, it involves some public meetings. Uh, it involves uh, setting the district itself. Uh, a lot of this statute mentions townships, which of course we don't have, so it would be a county initiative. We've identified the properties, I, I would say more than roughly, but perhaps not perfectly yet, that would need to be involved in that. It would have to be an election uh, of those folks affected in order to put that into place. Uh, and uh, next year, I believe, there only can be two election dates. One's in August, and one is in uh, the general in November. So the primary and the general are the only two dates they can hold it because of redistricting this year. So they can't hold the special at an off month. So I just wanted to throw that out there. I, I don't know what, I don't know where you go from here, Wade, and I visited a bit earlier. If there's a structure fire down there, my guess would be that somebody would help. Uh, but uh, that's by no means saying somebody will help. So I don't know what you want to do with it. So $3,100, I, I got to tell you, we've, we've, the county, we've got a garage down there. We've got a recreation center that was built. And you've got the most uh, uh, famous, if you will, or certainly cultural church in all of Christian County down there. I don't think any of you have been down there and seen us. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, I mean, let alone all the, the, the homes, the cabins, and other property owners. I don't see how we can t take one part of the county and say we're not going to come for thirty-one hundred dollars. I mean, I think it's a good deal. Uh, they're willing to do it. We had a we had our own fire department there at Silverdale, but uh, they, they disbanded. I mean, it's hard to you know, rural people. It's hard to keep things going, but. Uh, for thirty-one hundred dollars to get us covered, that's well worth it. Is it thirty one or two? Oh, thirsty bones. What was the actual cost, Jen? Was it thirty-one? Thirty-one twenty-five, perhaps. I don't know. Five five percent for twenty-two. Oh, I got you. Okay. Yeah, it's at thirty-two weeks. That's why it's pretty cheap. These folks have the equipment. I mean, they're written. They, they've been doing it on their own, even though they haven't been getting paid. So I give them a lot of credit. And we certainly don't want them to back out. I got to get you guys down there. It's absolutely beautiful. So, in, at that pay. so um, is it the understanding that we have to have a, a, a taxing district in order to collect the 30? That would be the formal way to do it. I don't know. I, well, I. It's none of my business, but I, you probably have trouble getting enough votes down there to, to tax an additional amount. But that would be the formal, the correct way to do it is to have a da taxing district. Unfortunately, the, the mechanisms to get one going, which we haven't had a new one for some time, to the point where I don't think uh, um, a lot of people really are versed in that. So we, you know, obviously ask for some help from other counties, I would, uh, in order to set that up. But the mechanism is such that it would not be paid until 23 if we were able to do it. So that leaves two years. This year, which is over, we've gotten the service for already, and next year, of course, which is uh, uh, really the year that would be affected. And I don't negotiate on their behalf other than I talked to Dustin Nelson, the chief behind the scenes, to, you know, some of their townsfolk are uh, rather uh, short with, you know, helping to get the money and they want to they want to just get it resolved and get her done from their end of things. I suppose they have needs too. So it looks like it's 62, in 2022, 6275 per property? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and uh, Commissioner Schoblem, I would say that, you know, those are kind of rough figures, you know, it could yeah. be 63 or it could be 61. <clears throat> Thoughts, ideas? Well, we're going to have to do something with it. So, we should start moving the ball. Can we send letters to the property owners? And yeah, we can do that. And, and kind of, uh, see where that's at or getting going. I don't know if we can, can we legally, I don't know that we can legally just give them money. 
Yeah, well, that's, that was the question to Jeff, and he hasn't heard back from the, the okay. his folks in St. Louis. It'd be nice. It's very reasonable cost, honestly. It's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it'd be just nice to be able to do that and call it a, some type of a purchase of service agreement. And, and you know, if there's a way to, to do that, that would be in yeah. consideration. Both the other districts in the county, I don't know how we get around, Correct. around that. Yeah. So, but. so send a letter to the folks affected. Uh, to the effect that we are considering establishing a taxing district for this that would be effective 2023. Um, probably minimal numbers. Uh, maybe tell them it would be about 70 bucks or something a, a unit. Give them the reason for it. I'll pass it by you, Wade, if you like, and check the box. I think Mary, uh, Mary Jean has some of the uh, properties there. Does Bearville have you know, like a, a fee schedule for fighters that aren't covered? Let's say that don't have a, a service. I do not know that. That's a great question. And maybe if they do, send that along with the letters. If they if they have some type of fee structure, say if they have a fire structure fire and, and they're called to, you know, what is that it the individual would be responsible for? Yeah, that's a great idea. Or if I could, Mr. Chair, I think whatever we do, we can, maybe we should have some sort of motion or something so that they've got an answer because that's what they're waiting for. They've been waiting a year and that is the issue. So I think we need to let them know one way or the other and then maybe we can work out the details. But I think that they need to know that they're going to be reimbursed. They've been doing it, like I say, for a year and that's the other people's team, which is kind of the rough that they have. They're great people. They're very dedicated on the fire and all that stuff. Hey, Wade. Yeah. What's happening to their insurance for down there? Why? Well, yeah. Good, good point. Yeah. <laughs> I, Without fire protection, their insurance. Like, yeah. Couldn't imagine. I did, uh, Dave, talk to some insurance folks. They can be insured, and uh, DNR covers all land fires, okay. um, but not structural fires, but the thought is that they would probably help out there, too. Like I say, I don't think something would burn them, but they are able to be insured. I think John can, to me, so it was the professional uh, said they'd be class 10 or class 7 or some class of insurance rate. But. The church alone is that's one of the, those Russian Orthodox. It's just, and they, the townspeople all got together and, and redid it. It's absolutely good. And it gets used. Right I mean, I'm just giving, that's just one example. And leaving that with all fire coverage is just, you know, I lose sleep at night over and over. Uh, I know that to get a reduction in their insurance costs, the fire department has to move up almost to city of Minneapolis standards, yeah. and ratings and stuff. I mean, um, having having none or 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 just a, uh, a volunteer department does not save um, saves buildings and lives. Yeah, I think that's great. Well, I mean, <laughs> I think the next step, well, yeah, well, I'd like to give them an answer today if we could, and, you know, then we're going to have to work out how we're going to do it. But they, I think what they're looking for is some reimbursement for this year, for sure, that they've already covered. Um, is there a question of whether we can or not? Is that what you're saying, Chair? Yeah. Of whether... Well, whether it's reimbursable, well, you know, whether we have to go for taxi district, I kind of was on the assumption that we would have to, since we have other districts throughout the county that are, you know, servicing certain areas. Uh, they're getting a certain amount for that certain area. So um, that's, I guess. I, I don't know uh, this, so I probably shouldn't talk, but I will anyway. Uh, I don't know if we can, uh, you know, if the cost is 62, if we can charge 82 and start to pay in arrears or not, that's, again, something that it just occurs to me it may or may not be possible. I don't know. That does nothing for right now. That's what right. they need. They're a year into it already, and what they're saying is, you know, we can't afford to keep going. So we have options other than that. Promise the commitment to pay it down. I don't think you do that. I don't know if we can go back on this year, maybe, but I doubt it. No, I was thinking moving forward for 2022, maybe yeah. doing some type of that. 
Yeah, but obviously it wouldn't become until 2023 if, if it were to happen anyway. And then to get a commitment there without actually knowing the you know, logistics of how it's going to get paid for, then we'd be committed, you know, the, the 3,200 plus the 2.5% every year after that. So, um, well, maybe the, I, I still think it's a great cost but and a great value for the money and certainly the companies also think that it, it would be unfair to not notify the property owners there and say, you know, this is the coverage that you have along with the fee schedule that, that they have and just kind of get moving on that as quickly as we can and, and see what the property owners say um, and, and then maybe at the same time find out whether we can just, uh, I don't know, can we impose a, a taxing district uh, through certain areas without a, obviously we have to have a public hearing. But yeah, well, you, well, if you're going to do a taxing district, we've got to go through the whole process. Right. right. So that would be a, a summer time deal because that's how yeah. most of the yeah. it. Maybe, maybe the, what I see is the best solution is we, we pay for this year. I mean, they, they provided the service so that they know that and tell them that we're going to look at if it's going to be a taxing district or whatever, we'll get that going this, uh, this coming year. But I think they're going to need something of goodwill here because they run on a shoot stream, you know, with that, with that little fire department they've got. Well, how, how's this? Can we, can we accept a motion for 2022 costs? Because we can maybe, you know, budget something for 2022, but 2021 is kind of over. So far as budgetary, you know, I, mean, I know there's contingencies here and there, but would that be more appropriate? Well, just, just like, you know, maybe it is or not. All I can tell you is from their perspective, they provide a fire service all year and haven't gotten paid. So they're, they're probably not going to like that. I mean, we, we can do anything we want here, and, you know, they, can, they may just say, screw it, screw it. Have they notified the populist owner that, that you know, a donation or something want could have been, uh, you know, the people down here, you know, could, uh, you know, by the same token, if they know this, maybe have some kind of fundraiser or, or do something or, or, you know. They into it. I don't know. I've never seen that work myself. Trying to get people all down there at the same time, etc. Who knows? And we've got all the mailing, you know, they don't have any of that. It's, it's in our county. I'd like the administration director to weigh in on this a little bit and we talked about that. Yeah, um, so what I'm hearing Tom say is that the county attorney is saying we cannot fund that directly. He has not found the mechanism yet to do that. Okay. And he's researched it then, has reached out to his uh, colleagues in St. Louis County and hasn't heard back. Okay, yeah. so we don't know at this point whether that's an allowable expenditure of public funds. Uh, that's correct. Okay. According to Cap or uh, Cap I, know, I, call Cap. I think we probably have to wait till we hear back from the county attorney. Yeah. In the meantime, add something for next year. Thank you. Sure. But it wouldn't be any different for next year. Yeah. I mean, it's well, you know, true. it's not really a matter of budgeting for it. Or I mean, we have the funds to pay for it. We could pay it out of contingency that's funds. True. I mean, it's not like we don't have the funds yeah, right. right now set aside for something like this. But if Tom is hearing that it's not an allowable expenditure, yeah, true, I guess yeah. we have to wait to hear back from the county attorney. Yeah. yeah or we know, can check I'm, with our auditors as well. I know what it's like for a small fire department to have to build people individually. I went through that. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, you get about 80% return, but then all of a sudden, someone doesn't want to pay that $20 and their house is on fire when they call you and you say, well, you didn't pay your bill. I mean, that's a bad thing. But by the same token, we, yeah, I agree we have to get it, but it should be. I, I don't, we're going to have to find a mechanism to do it because, um, well, was this brought up to us last year? Yeah, we've, been, we've been dealing with it yeah. since spring, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, we're just spring when I want to talk to folks. Is that going to you? And, you know, it may be helpful to them if they get a, a mass mailing out there and, and see how much money they got, but, if, but that's not going to pay the whole bill. I, I understand that. They are not going to go through all that to take care of our district. I mean, they've got their own. All they're looking for is what they feel, and I agree, it's a very fair price to yeah, give them fire protection. So, yeah, what, yeah, how do we do it? Yeah, I agree with you because I've sat on the fire department second. 
for years. Well, then you know they're not going to send mailers. Or either people are all over the country for a long time. Yeah, well, I know, but that's what I mean. And it's a very tough thing, but we've got, but can we legally pay for it? Well, again, that, that's, I suppose we'd have to ask the county attorney. I don't know. That's a, that's a legal issue. But if nothing else, I would think uh, with <laughs> some of our other funds that we can apply to help improve the fire department and they can maybe use that for the cost of the, there's got to be ways to do this. So that's what they're looking for. They've, they've provided service all year. They've got nothing in return. And they're at the end. We're not going to do anything. They're not going to take care of those fires. And I don't want them. Just a matter of how we do it, or if the board does want to do it, you know, let's, we could get that squared up right now and let them, let them know uh, that there's not support to do it. But they, they need they need an answer. They, they've been on this for well since last summer. And if it's time to give them something or let them know something, that's all. I mean. Wade, that's well put, and you can hear it in their voice when they say that <laughs> when they talk about it. I feel empathy for, you know, that's, it's such a remote area of our county, they, they give nothing, literally, you know, very little service. So, but fire protection is just a, that's a needed thing. So, my so what were the people that are not getting this fire protection? How do they feel about, do they, are they voicing their opinion on not having the coverage? Well, it depends if you're a resident or a lot of the people are, uh, you know, who knows? That's what I say from all over the country. If I land there, it's absolutely beautiful. And actually, uh, Little Fork River runs right through the middle. It's, uh, it's quite, quite the place. Yeah. So, I mean, to answer your question, it's, it's some of both. There's some people still living there, the, the old farms and stuff like that. To tell you the truth, the border is not lake, and, you know, that's, that's another uh, issue. So. Accept a motion to reimburse 20, 2021 and 2022 contingent fund attorney and administration review for funding mechanism. Did you make that motion, Mr. Chair? I will accept the motion that? for that. Do you make the motion? Thank you, Commissioner Hamlet. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. Any further discussion? Well, in time, you'll, you'll follow up with I'll send those letters. I'll talk to Dustin later today, and I'll, I'll emphasize the word contingent. So uh, it's a, a good answer, the best one I think we can give. So, Mr. Chair, I just want to make sure. So we're going to um, make a motion to fund this. Uh, do we want to use admit contingency funds? So the motion would be to reimburse 2021 and 2022 contingent upon attorney and administration review for funding mechanism. Okay, so subject to the attorney approving the expenditure, and then uh, we'll, we'll use uh, admin contingency funds if the attorney approves it. Okay, I've got that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Then that's the case. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, guys. Super. Jenny, here's that. Stop Kevin Baby. I have that person here. I think she should be here now. But whenever you get a chance. Go ahead, Mark. Oh. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning, Jenny. Uh, I'm here this morning to ask for approval to apply for a uh, grant through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Uh, the, the grant is basically they're going to give eight grants, roughly between nine and ten thousand dollars a piece. There is a 100% match requirement. So what I would be asking for is the commitment from the county to match that uh, grant. Uh, at no more than ten thousand dollars. So briefly, what what um, we're ask we're asking to do is construct a uh, veterans memorial at the Bacchus Community Center, 
and uh, of course the county would be the main applicant for this grant uh, and I'm I would I would be working on the grant of course and then with my partners uh, Lois Lundin from the Bacchus Center and Ashley Levine and Corey Horton from the uh, County uh, Heritage or Historic Society and um, so anyways I have so, to kind of frame the the work to be done for what we're envisioning I've got some pictures here that shows the area in Bacchus that would be Thank you. affected Thanks, Essentially, the project would be based on, it's not just merely building display cabinets. These display cabinets, of course, are museum archive quality, which, of course, um, translates into cost. The uh, grant, the overall project is looking to be about $20,000, like I, I alluded to. Um, the bulk of that, I would say 75 to 80% of that project goes into uh, building and uh, you know designing constructing and uh, installing the uh, museum grade cabinetry and display. Uh, the other funds would be used to do the electrical work as far as bringing LED lighting into the cabinetry and then additional LED lighting into that uh, east hallway of Bacchus Community Center. Um, so uh, anyways, it's uh, Lois and I have been talking about a similar project to this for about a year and uh, we were getting ready to have a meeting a, a week or so or a couple weeks ago and this grant just happened to come out. Um, so once again, um, we would, I would be the applicant in partnership with the uh, Kuchichin County Historical Society and the Bacchus Community Center. When you retired, what was your rank? Lieutenant Colonel. So he outranks me. I was a sergeant, but <laughs> I think I'm the only other veteran here, so I would move on that. Get something going. I mean, that's, that means a great, a great use of the space. Yeah, but, yeah. I'll second that, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner Hubbard. Thank you, Commissioner Eady. Any discussion? In the, in the second floor, you say that's going to be there be sealed cases and glass, and, yeah. and then it actually be on the first floor, and in the east hall. Yeah. And it's in some of the local families of uh, veterans would donate some exactly. And, mm -hmm. and that's you bring up a great point, and that's a huge part of the project of gathering these items from the county veterans. And you know, Lois has been approached, and our office has been approached about people that want to donate this stuff, and you know. Uh, of course, partnering with the historical society, they would be able to, you know, document it coming in, archive it, be able to care for everything, make sure that it's, it's, uh, you know, properly stored, so it won't, you know, basically degrade. Uh, so, like I said, even with the cabinets, it's U, they'll be UV protected. The wood used is is minimal off gassing, so it's it's a lot more than just, you know, putting glass cabinets like a kitchen or something like that. So. Very good cost. Thank you all for participating. It's a great place to have it. It will be. We're really excited about it. Our board, um, our, we have members on our board who asked, they said, we have all this beautiful hallway space and all these lockers. Let's do something better. And the veterans are always right at the top. So I'm really happy to see this moving forward with your help. We'll make it really good and very accessible to the community. Better go along with it because lieutenant colonels can be really biased. <laughs> <laughs> Second, uh, any further discussion? By hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that concludes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you all for taking the time to your hands. Next up, we have uh, public health and human service business. Mr. Chair, good morning. Hi, hi, Kathy. Good morning. Good morning. The first item under our business is to approve two uh, voided warrants. I'll move 
recommend that, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Eady. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. Any discussion on the warrants? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Now we have several renewals. <laughs> Yes, and I will lump these together if that's okay with you as far as the ones that have not uh, changed and then I'll just talk about the one that has changed. Certainly. Does that work or do you want to go, want me to go through them individually? All right, if everybody's let them feels comfortable doing that, we can, we can do that. Yeah. Okay. So number two, the AOA congregate meals, three AOA, AOA, uh, transportation, the stay, the volunteer driver agreement, um, first call for help in France against abuse, and then skip to nine, the Nemo jet, 10, Rainy River recovery, <clears throat> and um, 11, also Rainy R River recovery for assessments. Those have all remained the same. There's no changes. There's no um, increase in any funds being expended. Uh, they've all stayed the same as last year. I'll move to approve those, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Eady. I'll second with a question. Thank you, Commissioner Murray, go ahead. But what exactly is the stay? Guess I'm not familiar. That's the, yeah, Terry, that's the, um, Commissioner Murray, that's the, Cell funds you would notify. They changed the name. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. They renamed it to stay. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Is that motion? Hearing nothing further, I'll call the question on those items. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Then number eight is a request for approval of the renewal of the uh, Lutheran Social Services Guardianship Purchase of Service Agreement. And we did increase that. The 2021 amount was $48 per hour with a minimum of $144 a month. We've increased that in 2022 to $51.60 an hour with a minimum of $154.80. That um, increases our budget expenditures by about two thousand dollars for the number of clients we that we have for the year uh, sure. and they have not received a quite they have not received an increase for a number of years and this still actually has us a bit below what um most of the other counties are paying is this uh, like the guardian ad litem no, this is guardianship for people. Um, Lutheran Social Services provides guardians for people who don't have any other relatives or family members that could be guardians for them when they need someone to make decisions for them. And a lot of time that's all the county type, so we don't have to do a lot of that. Is that correct? We don't have to drive down. That's correct. We. Um, we don't, and we currently have 16 people um, under guardianship with with Lutheran Social Services. Second, Commissioner Murray's motion. Or vice versa. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. Thank you, Commissioner Bowling. Uh, any discussion on the renewal of the Lutheran and Social Services? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. And then the last item is the request approval of the renewal of the Triman System CMHS service agreement. And um, there is no changes to that agreement. It's just the annual renewal. I'll make the motion to accept that. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. One second, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Lady. Any discussion? Being that, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
can motion carries. Thank you. I do have um, a COVID update too, if you would like some information about that. Love it. Thank you. Uh, currently, now in Puchichin County, there is the cumulative cases are up to 1,613 with our deaths at 22. We do expect that that number may go up by one or two over the next uh, few days. There's 1,479 people no longer needing isolation and the tests are at 32,635. As far as our vaccination status, there's 6,882 people with at least one dose and 6,584 who have completed a series. Um, our age five plus group then is at 57.3% vaccinated and our age 65 plus is 86.6%. Um, there have been, um, last month was a very slow month for vaccinations, but there has been uh, an increase this month as far as people receiving vaccinations. And I think that's because it, there is there is a lot of it going around the community. Um, there are some very sick people. The hospital is asking that if anybody needs to come to urgent care or the emergency department that they know that if it isn't a real urgent uh, situation that they probably will end up sitting there for quite some time only to be told that they need to go to the clinic the next day because the hospital is um, struggling with staff issues and with very sick people uh, being there as just like any other hospital in the state it's very it's become very very difficult also for um, all of the hospitals to find placements for the <clears throat> uh, very sick people everywhere is full and this um, what our emergency room is asking of the community is the same thing that other emergency uh, rooms are asking of their communities too. I know that Duluth is um, is just telling people they can't, they won't be seen unless they are in dire need. Uh, because of staffing issues and the amount of people being sick. We are running uh, clinics anybody who is age um, 50 or over can come in and get a booster shot we are also able to do first and second vaccinations if need be when you call to public health we just have to let them know what you're looking for but the next clinic here is december 13th from nine and two to nine o'clock until 2 15 or 12 15 and we do, um, there is a registration online for that. And of course the, hot, the cl two clinics are also continuing to do vaccinations for kids and, and adults. Any questions? I'd like to, I, there's now two people in the community that I would consider the young and young and not really have any uh, pre-existing conditions that have passed now because of COVID. Uh, one, just recently that I knew pretty well and uh, their, their parents. And I'm hoping, as a, just making a statement, I hope people really start thinking about uh, getting their vaccinations and their uh, boosters. Uh, I just don't want to see any more people that I know, especially young people that have passed. And I hope I hope people start understanding the seriousness. And I think too that it, you know, it is, of course it is happening at school, um, which we all knew that would happen, but there are, there are some young kids, high school kids that have been very, very sick. And it's too early to tell whether they're going to have, suffer any long-term effects from this. Um, I know of kids, um, personally who are still several weeks after actually you know being sick with the fevers and the cough and stuff are still having breathing issues where they cannot participate in their sports because they are they're too winded if they if they try to exercise or or do any of their sports related activities and that's very concerning 
if that doesn't go away, we're gonna have a lot of people with long-term health problems um, because people were not vaccinated or didn't get boosters or, or were not careful. It's still recommended, of course, that everybody wears masks when you're out in public and stay six feet away and um, from others and wash your hands. Um, that's really, it's very obvious in the community that a lot of those practices were, last winter were very ingrained in all of us and this winter not so much that people are not taking the same kinds of precautions and it's still there and our, our numbers are continuing to go up. Yes, Commissioner uh, Kathy, are they, do they have the boosters for all the vaccines now or hopefully? Well, we have Moderna, yes, and um, and the Pfizer one has been going. So I, um, I don't, I don't believe there is a J and J booster. Okay. I wasn't sure if there was or not. Is so. There? Okay. Yeah, there is. I guess. Is there? Okay. I guess I'm not. We've not in. We're not involved with the J and J and and haven't been. Um, and there's not been a lot of it in our community. It's really been the Pfizer and the Moderna. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, but you can get you can get any of them for the booster shot, no matter what you've had for your your original shots. Okay. That just answered my the question I was going to bring up, Kathy. Is is do they want you to take the same one that you had before, or take a different one so you get a better um, a better coverage? Because there was talk at one time of you know, um, giving different vaccinations. The yeah, there is there is some evidence that if you get a different booster than you had for your original vaccine, that there is um, incre slightly increased um, benefit from that. Thank you. So Kathy, did you say, is Minnesota at 57%? Is that what you said? No, this is all Kuchichin County numbers. This is Kuchichin, okay. How about for the state? Yeah. I mean, when, I thought I heard something in the news that we were, we were at the top of the heap here in terms of new infections or something. We we, we actually, Kuchichin County actually was the hottest place for quite a while okay. um, for increase of, <clears throat> of COVID. But um, our, yes, the Midwest states, Austin, Wisconsin, um, in particular, have high rates of infection. I just say that I mean, we had a personal experience with our granddaughter and couldn't really get her in here because of it, you know, was full. We took her up into Duluth, and uh, they, they wouldn't take her either unless the Kate, Kate, yeah, did, they were full. But so we came back later, a couple days later, as an emergency. And then they took her in, and of course, thank goodness, you know, she was able to get the old. But yeah, it's unbelievable how many cases are still are. It doesn't seem like it's changed much in the last, since last year. No, it's actually it's we're pretty much back to where we were at the worst of it. Are the, are the higher risk groups uh, more vaccinated, Kathy? You think or? Yes, yes, they're definitely more vaccinated. I just looked here and for the state, um, the state numbers, 96.1% of people over 65 and plus have um, been vaccinated. That's awesome. And 69% of children five plus and 18 plus the CDC says it is at 80%. Take care and be well. Yeah, let us know when it's over, will you? Well, I sure would like to announce that. <laughs> <laughs> we all would, I think. Anything further? Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. Hi, Matt. Hi. Hey, thanks for hanging out there. <laughs> We're a little behind, so I appreciate everybody's patience. Uh, important, important stuff. So. Well, yeah, you had an important report there. So we have somebody we can pick on. <laughs> uh, the two items that I have on the agenda are the natural resource block grant agreement uh, for 2022 and 2023. Uh, 
with Bowser and then uh, and then approve a service agreement with the SWCD for uh, work associated with those those uh, with those grants that we receive uh, so uh, the two-year grant agreement with Bowser uh, the total awarded is 111 920 and that's the same amount that we received the last time we did this uh, uh, it's for DNR Shoreland, Local Water Management, uh, and Wetland Conservation Act, and then there's also an amount for septic treatment systems, uh, you know, for administering that, that program in our office. Uh, and, uh, you know, like I said, we work with SWCD to implement the, the uh, Shoreland, Local Water Management, and, and the Wetland uh, Conservation Act. Uh, we work together to, to administer those programs. So. I'm just looking to get approval to move forward with the agreement. Move. Thank you, Commissioner Stewart. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Bennett. Any discussion? Just so none of this has anything to do with the invasive species that are now in our lake, I take it. Uh, no, no, that's a different uh, funding. Uh, source, I guess. So, are we going to be looking for funding? You know, it seems like Black Bay is kind of a concentration place right now, and if we can hold it to that, that's what I was wondering. Is right. It money available? Uh, there's a. Uh, I know that uh, Bob DeGross from the Park Service scheduled a. A meeting to talk about those issues here in the near future in December uh, and so we'll have that discussion and I did send that out to all the commissioners if you wanted to attend uh, so that if uh, you know you have an interest you can certainly attend and, and we can learn more so. all right thank you man. yeah yeah any other discussion you know I'm called personal is in favor say aye opposed Mr. Chair, I just have one question. So, Matt, did you receive these funds in 2021? Have you received these funds yet? Uh, we receive them uh, uh, two times a year, I believe. Uh, and in, uh, uh, I don't know exact, the exact timing off the top. Okay. I'd have to look at the, All you know, right. the and, receipts. And, and the reason for my question is we're going to have to restrict these funds then if they're for yeah. future years. Yeah, and they're currently, so they're currently restricted sure. already. The, the well, I think this happened. I think this happens every two years because this yep. year we didn't restrict them because we were using them and we didn't get the money. But now we're going to get this money before, so we'll just have to watch that. Yeah, we do receive, receive the money every in. year. We do receive it every year, and we are restricting it. But uh, we'll go over that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We don't get it all in one big lump no. sum. No. Oh, okay. That answers the so. question. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Sorry about that. Is a follow-up question? Is that is that part of the? So the water uh, funding as well, a little bit of this. That that's correct. We we uh, we asked, you know, we contract out with the SWCD to help us implement that, and so we we pay them for their their work associated with these grant funds. And I'll double check as far as the funding, Jenny. You'd, I can't remember if it's all at once or if it's we get okay. so many different grant funds from the different uh, agencies. I'll have to double check how that comes. So. But we do receive it. <laughs> I know <Yes>. that. <laughs> it's just a matter of that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so the other uh, the other agreement is a 2022 agreement with SWCD. Like I said, it's for the administration. Uh, you know, cooperating with SWCD and uh, administering these programs. So I'm just looking for approval with on that agreement, and it's the same that we've had. Uh, it's the same agreement as last year. So I'll move. Thank you, Commissioner Scott. Second, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Bell. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Good morning. Okay, the first one we're here to talk about is the authorization to sign purchase agreement followed by closing with MW Friends property for Government Lot 1, Section 2, Township 40, Range 24, West and 4th, Principal Medium, Meridian. At the facility committee in October 28th this year, the committee recommended that the Highway Department move forward with a purchase agreement for a 40-acre parcel from 
MW Friends property for the purpose of establishing a new highway administration building and possibly in the future to relocate the International Falls Highway Maintenance Shop. The existing highway administration building is non-compliant with ADA requirements. We've talked about that a lot here in the past. Uh, it is estimated to bring the facility up to being compliant. It's going to cost over a million dollars. The 40-acre parcel is next to Cassad 332 and 15th Street in International Falls. The purchase agreement would be for $50,000 plus title and transaction fees. Also, the hard, uh, highway department would be responsible for removing non-recyclable waste paper bales that are on the site right now and that's estimated to cost for the removal and the disposal of about $20,000. And in lieu of requiring the board chair to sign all the necessary documents at closing, it is requested that the highway department, myself, receive authorization to represent the county at the closing of the land purchase. Uh, so I attached as a different additional information, the Med facility committee meeting notes, uh, and the information I prepared for that and also an aerial photo of the property and you can see on there the waste paper that they want to get rid of that needs to get be removed. Any other questions? That's what it's second. Thanks, Commissioner. So just so it's clear, the, the fifty is or the twenty is separate from the fifty. Yeah, the twenty would be we haven't contracted yet. We we assume we'll just come in and load them up with our loader, dump them in some side dumps, and they'll go to Kitson County, and we'll have to pay for the disposal fee and also the transportation. Sounds Thank you. Thank you for all your work on this too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this forward. This, uh, but I think the puzzle piece here to get the rest of the puzzle pieces to go in. So <laughs> gotta find that one piece first. I think this is it. So thank you guys for all your work. The next one. Oh, Any vote on this? Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Trent. Got a bolt up here now. <laughs> so we we have we right. have the warehouse guy you now. So. <laughs> yeah. He's better at this than me. I love these resolutions. How many warehouses can you have? There was a lot in this one. <laughs> so our second item is uh, we would like the board to consider adopting a local option sales tax for, for transportation. Uh, we had, as per Minnesota state statute 297A.993, um, the Minnesota legislators gave, thank you, gave the counties the authority to impose a local option sales tax of up to 0.5% uh, to cover transportation needs. Um, we had our public meeting back on November 2nd, 2021. Uh, limited attendance, but uh, there, there were some attendees. We went through the presentation. Uh, the presentation is currently located on the engineer's page on the Cushion County website. So folks can, can take a look at that. Uh, we talked about the need. We talked about uh, the projects, uh, how, how it was funded. Um, we didn't get a whole lot of feedback from outside of that meeting. I think we had, we had one person turn in a comment card and then we also got a, a letter of support from the city of Big Falls as well, so. Um, so we, we've, we've done our due diligence uh, that's required for this local option sales tax. Uh, in, the, in the packet, you can see the resolution. It talks about the projects that we would like to do. Uh, 
if it were implemented today, if the board did decide to adopt this resolution, it would uh, commence on April 1st, 2022, and it would, set, it would be set to expire on December 31st, 2032, or with completion of all the projects that are listed. Well, I'll be great with that. Uh, you, Trent, you can, uh, if a project is completed, we can, or we or you, whoever can add another project to this. With revised board resolution. Okay. Yes. Well, Mr. Chair, if I could, and obviously I'm not, I'm not a big, big on tax increases, but this is the best money you could ever spend. And you take a look at it, these are the, all those rural roads out there that would never get touched. Yeah. Get, well, get, like I said, Wade, I, I've been, I was at about to three different meetings. I heard no opposition at any of so doing that, do you want a motion? Certainly. All right, I'll make a motion that we accept this uh, and move on this tax. Second. Second. Never thought I'd vote for a tax. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't that way a second. Uh, Any discussion? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think, you know, Wade kind of hit it on the, on the nose. This is probably one of the, the better things that, that we could do. You know, most of the counties in the state have already done it. Um, you know, it's it's money, you know, that's going to help us out uh, getting projects done that, that have been needed for years um, without raising levies. Um, you know, it'll, it'll benefit everybody in the county. Since everybody else has spoken, very much in favor of this. I've been in favor of this from the start. It's uh, probably the best way we can get back out of our tax dollars and help spread it to, uh, to tour tourism area like everybody else has. So I, I, there's no downside to this that I know. Any other comments, concerns? Anyone's mad, we're just blaming it on Fred and Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Again, 40, big shoulders. Yeah, 42% of, uh, of the revenue that comes out of this tax will be folks outside of the county. Yep. That's, a, that's a huge benefit there. Yep. So. Thank you for all your time putting this together to yes. and moving this forward with a lot of work and getting the lists and getting estimates. I know there's a lot of kind of a tighter timetable you might say, but certainly good to be getting it uh, updated and getting it done. So, um, any other comments or no thank you for all the work you did. Thank you. Uh, uh, hearing nothing else up on the question, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. And motion well, carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Are you a salesman to sell weight on anything? Yeah, that's, I've never been a proponent of tax increases. Uh, the next item is public comment. Do we have anybody uh, in person or virtually for public comment? Yes, Mark. Uh, I just wanted to announce that uh, North Home VFW and American Legion are going to be hosting a Coffee with the Vets at North Home on December 1st, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at the Shining Light Cafe. Uh, there also will be a Coffee with the Vets at the uh, local uh, International Falls VFW Cafe on December 8th, 9, 8 a.m. to 12. And then uh, off in the future next year, we're having our first community action planning meeting for our suicide prevention project. Uh, that's going to be January 11th on, at uh, 6 p.m. at the Bacchus. More information on that will follow. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, if I could, Mr. Chairman, thank you for that. Uh, the, the, the veteran suicide rate, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know what happens. So that's, that's great. And by the way, I'm going to tell all you guys, don't mess around. That's the famous Joe Benny, and he can settle you down immediately. 
<laughs> All the way from Bemidji, Minnesota. We bring him for comic relief. <laughs> I didn't know it was that funny. <laughs> he's the best well, singer. Looks aren't everything, Joel. <laughs> and he's the best singer ever. He doesn't even need a microphone and a big, uh, those big auditoriums and even sing to us. Yeah, beautiful. What are you inviting? Oh, yeah. careful what you invite. Darn right. <laughs> do, do we have any other public comment? Hearing no other public comments, I will call for a motion to adjourn. Move. Thank you, Commissioner Eady. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Scoy. All those in favor of adjourn, say aye. 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 Opposed? And we are adjourned. Thank you.